Anyone who's sailed a foiling moth will know McConaughey boats. After all, in 17 years, they've built around 4,000, from the Blade Rider to the Mac 2, and now they're producing the Wasp. But they're also well known for their carbon creations at the other end of the scale, from Maxis and Performance Cats through a long list of some of the world's most famous racers. They're also the builders of the new AC40, but recently they've been busy building this. The Vortex Pod Racer. It's already won awards. And then the man behind the original concept, Group Director Mark Evans, said this. I mean, you don't have to be agile, you, you don't have to be fit, and you can be doing, you know, 25 knots with ease, uh, ripping around out there, and it's, it's a lot of fun because you're, you're about 600 mils to 700 mils off the water doing 25 knots, and, and you know it. With one hand, I was reaching for my sailing kit, with the other firing up Sky Scanner. But as it turned out, the boat had already left the building on its way to various shows around the world. So instead, I jumped on a call, as they say, to find out more. So, Mark, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. I mean, the Vortex Pod Racer is an extraordinary looking boat, but just give us, I mean, if you had to tell someone in one sentence what it is, how would how would you describe it? Uh, I, I would describe the Vortex as a foiling dinghy for everybody. Uh, a lot of people think that it's a, it's a the trimaran, but in actual fact, it's not. Basically, you, you sit inside the boat um, and you're looking over the foredeck. And the way that I wanted to approach it, I wanted to approach it like you're flying, the, like an aeroplane. So you to steer to steer the, the vortex, you use your feet, and you basically, if you, um, if you push um, to, on the port side, you turn to port and, and so forth. So. Uh, so it takes a little bit to get your head around that you're steering with your feet and then um, then we have a joystick basically you push the joystick fore and aft and it's no different to a, a moth where you've got trim where you twist the um, the handle um, it rocks the rudder fore and aft so that gives you trim of the boat and then if you push the uh, joystick uh, port to starboard then what it does, it actually uh, reduces lift uh, on the side that you push the joystick to. So if you're going if on the windward side, um, you want to reduce the lift because uh, of the riding moment of the sail and basically pull the joystick to the windward side, reduce the foil lift and um, you fly the boat. The boat foils by itself. It's got a very similar mechanism as an international moth with uh, wands. So you you basically just you move the joystick just a little bit of trim to pop it out of the water, just to keep the boat level, and then the boat will just just pop out of the water. Um, I mean, there's a lot of little tricks, and it's not uh, you know it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's no different to you see these foiling yachts like the AC boats where they have to, you know, go downwind a bit, get a bit of boat speed, uh, build a bit of boat speed to generate riding moment uh, off the foils. And then as soon as you get riding moment off the foils, then then basically the boat will pop and you're off and, and you're foiling out of the water. Broadly speaking, until people sort of get to the point where they're sort of refining the way that they sail, broadly speaking, this boat is designed to sail upright. You talked about two wand systems you've got a foil uh, on each of the outriggers um, and they're self-leveling so in its most basic form it basically sails itself it sails itself upright does it you don't have to really worry too much about the heel um, you don't have to worry about heel at all and this is the great thing about the boat is you jump in it and you you don't you're not moving um, you're concentrating on flying the boat and um, and it just it just it flies flat, you know, like level uh, fore and aft, and and you're trimming fore and aft probably is the biggest um, thing that you're concentrating on. You're not you're not worried about fl- um, uh, side to side um, at all when you're sailing the boat. So you're, you're concentrating definitely on the fore and aft trim, 
more than anything else. And once the boat's uh, sheeted on and off you go, you just, you, you're not touching any of the sails. You're, the sails are pretty well locked and you can steer the boat and take the, um, you steer to the wind basically and steer to the, uh, the gusts um, more than trimming the sails. So you talked about the boat taking off at six knots of boat speed. What kind of wind yeah. speed do you need to, to do that? Uh, I think, you know, probably eight, eight to ten, ten knots, eight to ten knots. And so it's pretty low. And then, you know, you just need to get it to pop. So as soon as it pops, you're generating wind and it's no different to any other boat, apparent. So, um, yeah, it's pretty low wind conditions. Um, but that you know, again, that when you get a lower wind conditions, it's uh, it's a skill level that comes in to get yourself out of the water early, and no different to a moth sailor. Some of the moth sailors can get out of the water quite early compared to others, so that that'll come in in time to get out of the water earlier. But you don't need a lot of wind; probably about eight knots of breeze, eight to nine knots of breeze. And what kind of weight range are you looking at? Presum as in crew, presumably being light isn't an issue because you're not generating righty moment in this in this boat. Presumably the yeah. heavy end is, is the more tricky end. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm uh, 75 kilos. And, um, you know, as we were testing the boat and, and doing things, we, uh, you know, we had a bit of water in the bilge. In actual fact, one time I, let, I left the Venturi open. And so I probably had about you know two inches of water or more in the bottom of the boat, and 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 I'm falling around probably with another seventy odd kilos in the bottom of the boat, and no problem at all. So 140 kilos plus person could easily jump in this boat and go foiling. And on the flight control systems, you're we're getting used to hearing about um, autopilots, flight control systems, electronics, batteries, all that kind of stuff. Do you have any of this, uh, that in this boat, or is it a fully no. manual boat? It's, it's fully manual. It's all string. I tried to keep it light. So the, basically the uh, joystick is all um, uh, block and tackle, and then uh, the everything basically is block and tackle. So your, your feet, your steering is all block and tackle. So it's just, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, it's just all Dyneema and, and Spectra and that sort of things, and yeah. So, yeah, that was, <coughs> no flight control. Talk us through the controls, because there's quite a few control lines there. Um, what do they What do they do? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's nine control lines uh, in the boat that make it look quite busy. In the actual fact, they do very little. The, the thing is, with this particular boat, you're in a cockpit. So if if you if you wanted to come up to a beach, for instance. And, that, and you had your boat trolley, uh, you can't get out onto the wings and pull your foils up. It's not like a normal dinghy where the foils are underneath you and you can pull the foils up. So um, I had to figure out a, a method of actually pulling the foils up, putting them down and locking them um, with, without leaving the cockpit. And the, so those foil controls are on the outboard side of the cockpit, are they? they're the outermost, I think, looking at it from here. Yeah. Yeah, so there's one to pull the foil up, there's one to pull the foil down, and then there's one to lock it. And then the same with the rudder. So you end up with nine ropes basically lifting um, foils up and down. The sail controls, I'm just scrolling through them here, the sail controls are fairly straightforward and there's actually not that many of them. Yeah, it's exactly the same as any other dinghy. We, we didn't, there's nothing new when it comes to sailing this as a, as a dinghy. It's exactly the same. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the way that I saw the design was for the dads or all the mums, you know, to, to jump in this boat. I mean, a, a lot of the uh, parents, they would buy uh, a, a Wasp or, or a Mac 2 or something for their son or daughter. And then I thought, I mean, they do, a lot of that is it, they buy them because probably they would like to do it themselves. <laughs> and so I sort of thought, well, you know, maybe they can buy a, a moth, an international moth for their for their uh, children. And then, okay, dad can get out there as well and or mum and rip around and, and enjoy the time on the water uh, as well. When we first put the boat in the water and we, and we were comfortable with it, uh, I grabbed uh, four people that I knew. And one of them um, was a, a 65, probably 100 kilos. And um, 
we took him out on the water, um, put him in, in the boat, and within 15 minutes he was falling. N- never been on a falling boat before. What kind of um, what kind of top speeds have you got to so far? Um, we're, yeah, we've been sort of around that 25 um, knot mark, uh, but it's still got more to go. It sort of be an ice boat territory, really, wouldn't it? From the speeds you're talking about, I mean, I know they go a lot faster than that, but even so, it's sort of seeing the images and some of the video that you've put out there it does remind me a little bit of a dn it's sort of that kind of size it's that sort of concept well to be honest that's where the inspiration came from i was watching the ice boats and uh i was at home as a rainy day i'm just flicking around through youtube just watching different clips and and i saw the ice boats and i went in actual fact i could build one of those in the water so that's how it all all began and i just started sketching and sketching it up and then i ended up you know it took me a while because it wasn't something that we just said okay we're going to do this overnight uh it was sort of like in between jobs so it took us a few years to get it all together and functioning the way it is um and we enjoyed the process of going through that i mean you learn a lot yeah i bet you do um talking of learning a lot i have to ask have you have you capsized it have you crashed it have you face planted you know, we've pushed it really hard and um, I've put some, you know, uh, test sailors in the boat and they've tried to trip the boat over and everything like that and we could not get the boat to roll. As soon as you've got a little bit of boat speed, it's super stable. The riding moment is more than uh, A-class cat, way more. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that big question, what does it cost? It's not a cheap toy, it's full carbon fibre. Uh, it's about 75k. Uh, it comes with a full box, so like it comes in its own piece of box with its, it's all sign written, it's got uh, the sails, it's got the electronics, it's, it's turnkey out of the box and um, you can fit two of these in a container. And, and when you yeah. say 75k, that's US dollars? Yeah, US. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I must ask is, presumably you if all goes well, you are going to tool up so that you can produce these. It's probably not going to be quite as many as you produce in the moth world. Who knows? But you will production build them, I guess. Yeah, no, no. It's a, we've actually it's fully tooled already. It's ready to go into production. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to manufacturing it, I mean, I think you'll be surprised. It, you know, it's not a small. It's not a moth. It's you. you every, even when people see it, they go, "Oh, okay, it's a lot bigger than what I thought." It's a it's a decent piece of kit. I mean, if you look at if you look at some of those dimensions on the website, you'll start to understand. And um, you know, it's actually wider than it is long. Um, and then with the foils on, it's it's quite wide again. So, and that's why we, uh, you know, for a boat park, and it, it takes up a lot of real estate. So that's why we had two pins. You pull two pins out of each wing, or one pin out of each wing, and you can actually fold the wings up, so you're not taking up too much real estate. So, really, it's actually a little bit less real estate than a, um, a say, a sailing cat or something that you would take up in a boat park. Good to speak to you, Mark, and thanks very much for taking the time to explain it. And um, yeah, look forward to hearing some more. Okay, yeah, no worries. Thank you.